Have you ever wondered why two different people can use the exact same technology but get different results? We're going to break that down for you today. Rajiv is going to tell us exactly what you can do to optimize your usage of ChatGPT. Welcome to another episode of Real Estate AI Flash, a podcast dedicated to real estate agents' use of AI to power their business. So, Jimmy, that's a great question, right? So when I first got access to ChatGPT, I was getting all kinds of responses. I was curious, right? It, you know, stay hungry, stay foolish, right? Always like curious stuff. And then I started to dig in and look at other people's chat GPT output compared to mine. Clearly, it was different because of the kind of instructions you were given it. And let's take a step back from it. You know, I've I've learned this, and this has held me well in learning chat GPT and other AI technologies. It is a very powerful tool, number one but it is still untrained. You just had to learn how to train it. And a good analogy for all of us to think about as a real estate agent is imagine if you hired an assistant, qualified, but they just don't know your business. They just don't know how you operate, uh, how you want stuff to come out. So you can't just throw an, an assistant untrained and expect the results you'd like to get from a technology like GPT. So think of it as a human being. I know it's not, okay? Some of us are scared. Oh, is there a human on the other side? No, no, there's no human on the other side. There's a lot of humans actually training the model, but the model is ChatGPT. So if you take that step, instead of just asking you to write something, you got to start to train it. And today's episode is going to give you the right foundation so you get it and you can apply it ongoing. So, so let's start, Jimmy, with some... I mean, we're in real estate, so acronyms are like a bound in real estate. So today we're going to introduce people to two acronyms. First one is four P's. Um, and the first one is, so the P's are basically prime, prompt, polish, and publish. Um, and prompt is the only one that truly GPT understands. And we covered that in the, in the inaugural episode. But a prompt is an instruction to chat GPT to do something. But before you instruct, you got to prime it. And that's where we're going to get into a new acronym called RISE. So, mm -hmm. so think of prime as RISE as in role, input, steps or specifics, and expectation. So as an example, I'm a real estate agent. I wanted to write a listing description for a property. So let's talk about prime. I believe prime is the biggest part of the four Ps. If you do prime well, the others will just flow from there. So let's talk about rise. So a role could be act as an experienced marketer with real estate expertise. Act, and you want to maybe social media. You want to do stuff with social media. Act as an so, experienced social media marketer with real estate industry expertise. So what if I want to write a business plan? Act as a successful real estate coach that has coached hundreds of agents to accomplish their goals. So that's the role. You're defining it the role versus just giving it a prompt. Write me a business plan for 2024. That's not going to be as effective as if you prime it with the right role, right? And then the input. You got to also give it more inputs, right? So as an example, take that business, business uh, plan one or, or a listing description one. You can't just say write a listing description for one to one Main Street. You got to give it a lot more than that. You got to give it beds, bats, things that you don't want it to assume, or the word we say is hallucinate in chat GPT world, which is it just sort of lies. It just doesn't know. So if you can draw a framework around what you want it to use to kind of come up with what you need, those are the inputs. What if you're doing a marketing campaign and you're targeting homeowners that have equity in their home? Maybe you, the input is, the audience for this campaign is 50% more equity or, or more equity in their homes. So it's going to start to think about right language around equity versus just saying write a seller campaign. So input is critical and obviously the steps. And then you start to look at um, steps as in um, what do you want to get out of it? Expectations, right? So think about do you want a blog post? conversation style, or do you want a table? 
You know, you can ask ChatGPT to write a social media plan for an entire 30 days and put it in table form. But if you don't mention the table, it will just start to write stuff that you're going to have to copy and do more work with. So as you start to embrace these four concepts of rise, role, input, steps, and expectation, the priming becomes a lot easier for you and it becomes uh, second nature as you start to use solutions like ChatGPT and you automatically um, start to get better outputs than someone that's not thinking that way. Uh, anything you want to add there, Jimmy? Yeah, no, I'd, I'd love just to get some clarification here because I think this is so good that we probably ought to slow down a little bit right here just from a standpoint of let's just kind of go through. Um, and I want, to re I want to kind of rewind the tape, paraphrase a little bit of this, and then just ask for some clarification. So like when we're talking about the role, act as... So what are we wanting it to be the expert in? You know, act as a marketing expert, a real estate marketing expert, act as a real estate um, copywriter, whatever it is, we want to give it the understanding of what its role is in this and who it's acting as. Then the input, you know, just details, uh, whether this is we're talking about something that we want it to uh, do for us. So what is it that we want as far as the things you don't want um, or the things that you don't want it to assume? So make sure you're putting details in so that it can get it more specific for you. That comes to the steps, which are basically those specific things, correct? Yeah. You want to expand. Tell me a little more about the steps and then we'll talk about the expectations. The other thing, mind. before we get to steps, Jimmy, the other thing input wise, uh, I'm glad you summarized it. You could also say now that GPT's knowledge cutoff is all the way to September 2023, you can say your role includes the understanding of the Fair Housing Act. That's great. Right? I mean, stuff like yeah. that, the more you give it instructions, the less it goes off the rails. That's right? great. Uh, and steps could be, give me a seven-day marketing plan to promote right. a property. Give me output in, um, give me a 30-day marketing plan for, for sole listings. Right? So again, giving it more specific instructions and what you're expecting out of it, it will it will generate that out of the get go, and you'll get to the five yard line very quickly versus taking a lot of time to get there. Yeah, you know something I think we always um, also uh, don't realize is at least when I first started is is that once you get this initial back, and we're going to go through the prompting and those things, but once you get the initial back from you, if it's not exactly what you want. Just ask it to rewrite it in whatever it is and maybe give it more, you know, of maybe more of these specifics. Give it some of the details and do those things. So that's the RISE principle. Uh, we love our acronyms in real estate. Uh, so that's our RISE principle. Let's get back to those four P's and how this really affects that if you don't. Yeah. Mind. So now that we've nailed RISE and PRIME, now we start to prompt. Prompt is exactly what ChatGPT, you're instructing ChatGPT to do something. Write a listing description is a prompt. Um, and then write a social media marketing plan, write an SEO optimized Facebook post, right. um, write a, again, you can say hundred word or a thousand word LinkedIn article. Uh, that is a specific prompt you're giving chat GPT. So, but if you prime it properly, it will pull out exactly. It'll give you what exactly you'd want with the prompt. And remember, I always give this analogy sports guy. So, um, gets you to the five yard line. It's never a touchdown. Okay. And this is where enter the third P, which is polish. Remember, Chad GPT is not a real estate agent. You are. So nothing should get by directly without you proofing it, making sure it's compliant, passes all the tests, dots the I's, and whatever that analogy is. Uh, yeah. Right. Crosses <laughs> the T's. Yeah. 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 And then, so that's the word for polish. So polish is simply reading through it. Is it in your voice? And we'll do yeah. a whole other episode on about how to make ChatGPT write like you. But it should be exactly what you think you want to put out. And that's the polish piece. And of course, the final one, you're doing all this to publish it somewhere, right? So you're going to write an email or do social media or write a listing description, take it to the MLS, all of these tasks are the publishing component of it. But once you do the three piece properly, the publish is the easiest part. Uh, and so um, in just to recap, we got prime, which is the rise principles, role, input, steps, and expectation for prime. Once you nail prime, prompt comes very easily. And then you have your polish, 
proofing it with your own eyes, making sure it's you, it's your voice, and then you publish it. So if you have four Ps and rise, you got the right foundation to leverage chat GPT going forward. Hey, listen, when you first taught me this and I began to utilize this, it makes everything so much easier because once we have a system in place, you know, this is the thing. I think some people get overwhelmed by the technology or maybe I'm not doing this right. First off, you can't break this. But secondly, uh, by utilizing a systemized approach, uh, exactly the way that Rajiv has laid this out, it changed everything for us because now we went into it asking these questions, making sure we were doing this on the front end of that prime portion, which really helped everything flow faster. So in wrapping up, anything you want to add to this, Rajiv, and um, as we wrap up today? Well, I'll tell you, first of all, Jimmy, I have four peas and rice as a background on my computer. That's so that, so, so that I don't forget about it. You know, no matter how much times I speak about it, I, I, I keep it in the corner so I know, oh, I got to use four peas and rice. <laughs> But in, in, in reality, though, I would encourage all of you that are listening to this, apply this and compare your outputs from previous time you've used it without the foundation. And I, I bet your results are going to be different and better, not just different, better. And can't wait to see you on another episode. Absolutely. Listen, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe to the podcast, make sure you do so. Rajiv and I are going to do our best to make sure that you are the most informed and with the best information possible to utilize this, uh, this amazing technology to help grow your business. Take care and we'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks for watching the video. I specifically chose the video below for you because it builds on the one you just watched. I hope it's helpful and I'll talk to you soon.